I love eating and I love cooking, but like you, I always feel I'm in a hurry and it can be hard trying to fit everything in. Children, work, family, everything else life throws at you. And I am not prepared to sacrifice a single meal. But I've got the answer. In a word, it's express. I pride myself on being able to make a meal out of anything and in whatever little time I have. Admittedly, sometimes it's more of a challenge than others, so when I'm really up against the clock, I take the express route to deliciousness. When I'm home alone, my 10-minute wonder is a fabulous flash-fried steak with garlicky white bean mash. For my extended family, it's my curry in a hurry, a weekend lunch in 20 minutes. And to give my friends a feast, it's an entire three-course dinner party in fewer than 30 minutes, starting with shell on prawns with spicy dipping sauce, followed by chickpeas with cumin and sherry and plumptious scallops with chorizo sausage. Then an almost instant chocolate mousse. Yum, yum. So we're off, and the expressway means you really can beat the clock. My default position is ravenous, so I've mastered getting dinner on the table in under 10 minutes. Now, I'm in a proper hot meal. I'm thinking flash fried steak and garlicky white bean mash. Just gonna nip and get the steak now. really scrawny little steaks that used to be called minute steaks. But well, when I was a child, my father always used to call them minute steaks because he couldn't believe how ungenerously proportioned they were. Well, I think you can actually get yourself a really great supper if you just go up a notch. I do a two-minute steak, and that's to say finely cut but still juicy sirloin, and it means you can get a really fabulous supper in minutes. My flash fried steak and white bean mash is pretty much instant gratification. That's to say, supper on the table in under 10 minutes. I shall unveil the strip of sirloin. It's about half a centimetre thick. It needs just a minute aside, but I haven't got a moment to lose. I'm going to drain my beans for the mash. I always think anyway that when you want the comfort of mashed potato is precisely when you don't have time to make it. And this does the trick. Steak's ready to turn now. On with the white bean mash. And start off with about two teaspoons of garlic infused oil. I mean, if you want, you can use regular olive oil and just mince a bit of garlic into it. But on top of the oil, Grate a little lemon zest. It really scents the oil. It's all lemony and garlicky. I'm going to tumble my drained tannerine beans into the warm, now fragrant oil. That operating two decks. Out to this juicy little steak here. Quick bit of tenderizing lemon gravy. Italians always put lemon on their steak and it really brings out the flavour. But more important, I think, is that you really want to make sure that a thin cut bit of meat doesn't dry out. And really, to make the mash, you do no more than push the beans into the warm oil. They just begin to disintegrate and turn into a messy, textured mash. Could hardly be easier. The one thing I have to warn you about is that this is instantly addictive. Oh, and a final touch, bit of adornment. I mean, just because I'm eating by myself doesn't mean I don't want the meal to be special. I always want my meals to be special. Oh, I think I'll have a bit more garlic oil. Just over the mash. Oh, and some mustard too. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready for my supper. 
and this was well under 10 minutes. If you think a solo supper in 10 minutes is good going, you wait and see what I can do in 20 minutes, and that's a full-on weekend feast for family and friends. I know this doesn't look like the basket of someone who's about to make curry, but I promise you, from the time I'm in my kitchen, I will have lunch on the table in 20 minutes. Bruno. Let's move that, move that bag. Oh. Bruno, darling, we're going to be home any minute. And I want you to do your weekend homework when I get on with the curry. Mum, I've only got, like, a small bit, so can we just do it tomorrow or something? No, 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 no. no. And anyway, actually, you've got no excuse there, because it's only going to take me about 20 minutes to cook the lunch. No, don't be like that because you've got our yeah. and Herlock coming round, okay. and yeah, yeah it's not be nice. And also, I think Charlie's coming to do a sleepover tonight. Okay. Making curry can be an incredibly lengthy and involved <coughs> process, but not this one. Not for nothing do I call it curry in a hurry. I can get it from stove to stomach in 20 minutes. This involves a number of shortcuts, and I'm very, very pleased with them. This is my first one. I use wok oil. Wok oil is just vegetable oil with a bit of sesame oil and some ginger and garlic added. So a boost of flavour from the off. And shortcut number two. I use spring onions rather than onions, which I just snip in. I mean, this couldn't be easier. And they take hardly any time to cook. And also, I'm making a green chicken curry, and I like the fact that we start off with a lovely sprinkling of bright, bright green. Now, this is something I could not live without in my store cupboard. It's green curry paste. And what this gives you is authentic Thai flavour and great spicy resonance just with a couple of dollops. Now, I know there are people who find the time to grind up a hundredweight of galangal and lime leaves and chilies. I am not one of them. But what I think is essential here is that you use chicken thighs, not breast. The thighs stay lovely and tender rather than going all stringy like breast meat does. I put a kilo in, which will be more than enough for five of us. I'm going to let the chicken cook for about four minutes or so. Coconut milk gives you is richness, sweetness, and a thick, luscious sauce. I want a bit of stock in here as well. Now I'm using the tubbed fresh sauce simply because I have some left over. It's absolutely fine to use concentrate or a stock cube, and in fact, I'm going to boost the flavour slightly with a bit of chicken stock concentrate. I'm going to add a little fish sauce. Just about a tablespoon. Now, while this cooks, I am going to have a little walk around my frozen kitchen garden. Mm -hmm. 
So I have plucked some frozen soya beans, which are so delicious. Very, very good for you as well. Let's get these in. Soya beans taste rather like broad beans, only smaller and a bit more tender. I'm going to put the peas in now as well. Again, about 200 grams. And coriander, you have to have that. Quite a lot. Just chop it up. The soybeans and peas should be cooked now, and really the fine beans need to keep their crunch. So put in a handful. Mm. And really, by the time they're warmed through, they'll be ready. But I want to add some coriander now, because although it's great to have it to sprinkle on at the table, I want some of the flavor to penetrate a bit more deeply. In that goes. <laughs> Job done. How long did this take? Oh, about two days. It was a great inconvenience. No. Mm. 20 minutes, darling, and it was a pleasure every one of those minutes. And five minutes to eat. But that's only us, our family. True. Yeah. <laughs> My cup runneth over. Mm. Supper in 10 minutes, full on feast of a lunch in 20. That's nothing. I can do, and I'm about to do, a three-course dinner party for six in under half an hour. I've got people arriving in, <laughs> in 45 minutes, and I know that I can cook the three courses, lay the table, get myself ready in well under that time. So start the clock. do a three-course meal in 30 minutes, you need a strategy. And mine is think of the shortcut ingredient. I'm making an instant chocolate mousse. Makes sense to start with pudding. They can stay in the fridge until we're ready to eat them. And the shortcut ingredient here are mini marshmallows. I've got 150 grams of mini marshmallows. And what these do is mean that you don't have to worry about eggs, no beating, no whisking, no separating, no nothing. Not bothering with sugar either, actually. But that's by the by. So on top of the marshmallows, I want 50 grams of unsalted butter, nice and soft. And then another sterling shortcut ingredient, little chocolate buttons or chips, instead of a bar that I have to chop up myself. Not that I want to paint myself as an entirely lazy creature, but every little helps. I want 250 grams of chocolate buttons or chips dark chocolate. Now, some water, about four tablespoons, from a recently boiled kettle. Heat on with a stir. And these can melt together. Mm. The marshmallows will be the last to melt, but that doesn't matter. And what the marshmallows give is that sort of soft squidginess, like the interior of a meringue, and that turns this into chocolate mousse. I rather love it when it's striated with a bit of white, so don't worry if the marshmallows stay visible. This has now delectably melted, so I'll leave it here to cool a little while I beat a 284 milliliter tub of cream with a teaspoon of vanilla. the cream until it forms firm peaks. Right, cream is whisked. Now it's just a case of folding the chocolate mixture into the cream. So I can pour... Ah! Oh, I could eat it just like this, to be honest. The useful thing about serving something like a mousse, which is eaten cold, is that when you've finished your main course, you don't have to rush up and start fussing over the stove. You just glide serenely to the fridge and bring out these dark beauties. 
And unlike a regular mousse, which needs a good six hours to set, I mean, these will be ready to eat in five minutes, if not now. So pudding's dealt with. Don't worry if you cannot produce the perfect swirl. I mean, I can't. Whatever, they look so beautiful. That's my glasses filled up. Mm. I think a little final adornment would be rather beautiful. And I've got some white chocolate to grate over them. You don't need much. So that's pudding done. Bang on schedule. I shall get on with the starter now. When you're up against it, you do need an almost instant starter. And my prawns with spicy dipping sauce is exactly that. And what I love about it is that I use ingredients that, frankly, I always keep here in the pantry. It makes it very express. I've got my plastic lime juice, my mayo, my harissa, which is a Moroccan paste with tomatoes and garlic and chilies and a lot of resonant and gorgeous spices and honey. And then, frankly, it's an assembly job and we're done. And, you know, the great thing is just a bit of light stirring and the starter is done. Well, that's the sauce, anyway. Just need my prawns. Look at these creatures. They look positively primeval. I love that. A couple of bowls. And I'm ready to roll. The spicy dipping sauce is really my Moroccan take on a Mary Rose sauce. So I start off with mayonnaise. I think you have to buy good mayonnaise for this. I'm using a whole jar, a small jar, but a whole jar. Now, if I were making a regular Mary Rose sauce, I would be using tomato paste or puree or ketchup here. I, instead, am using harissa. It's half a small jar I use because I like it very hot. Stir it together. I love the way it turns such a blushing coral. And because you need balance in life, and it's a lot easier to come by in the kitchen than anywhere else, about a teaspoon of honey for sweetness. And I want a little sharpness too. About a teaspoon of lime juice. My trusty ever-ready lime. And although I hate to give extra washing up, I do think you need to stir in one bowl and decant to another. <laughs> Look at the mess I've made. In it goes. And I'm going to decant the prawns too. When you're using this size prawns, I think it's easier to go by number than weight. And I'd say about four per person. And really, if I think that's enough, it is enough. Here we go. And I'm sticking to my schedule impeccably. This is so quick, I've got time to put these out, do the table, and then get on with the main course. Had I had time, I'd have gone to the florist. But I don't have any time, so I went to the corner shop. And I know it's kind of awful to say that flowers are ugly, but these aren't really that beautiful. But I'm going to show you how to save them. Quick beheading. I think it's impossible for flowers not to look beautiful when they're just displayed like this in little bottles. If you don't have bottles, really just use glasses, old jam jars. Any receptacle will do. I think the important thing is that they're fairly small, but very good for holding a few sprigs of flowers that you can then dot up and down the table. I'm going to take some of these blooms and add them to my finger bowl. Right, so that's the table done. Now I'm going to get on with the main courses. 
chickpeas with sherry and cumin and scallops and chorizo, yum. Nearly there and making very good time. Just two dishes to make. And that's for the main course. And the great thing about these is that not only are they very quick and simple, but also there is no fussing around at the stove at the last minute. All will be done and dusted. To go with my chorizo and scallops, I'm making an equally Spanish-scented chickpeas with cumin and the sherry. I'm starting off, because it saves time and effort, with a bit of garlic oil. And in that, I want about two teaspoons of cumin seeds. And what I love about these is that they give a certain earthy perfume to the room. And as people come into the house, they will smell these warm scents of cooking. I always like that. I like to welcome people with the food. When you hear the cumin seeds sizzle in the garlic oil, you will really be met by a wall of fragrance. It's heavenly. And on top of this scented oil, I want three cans of drained chickpeas. In a way, I suppose this vegetable dish is doing double duty. It's standing in for the potatoes and as well, it's something of a salad because I like to throw in a packet of rocket. And you're not really cooking it, you're just wilting it down slightly. The pièce de résistance. A generous slug of sherry. About four tablespoons of rich cream sherry. Mm. I love its gurgling. The minute the chickpeas have warmed through, the leaves have wilted, and the sherry reduced a little, we're done. So heat off, lid on, and this will sit beautifully, keeping warm, until we want to eat it. And now, the scallops and chorizo, and the joy here is that I need two ingredients, and we're on our way, beating the clock. So scallops and chorizo, it couldn't be an easier main course, and it couldn't be more sensational. I mean, it takes a couple of minutes. I talked about shortcut ingredients, and I'm aware that that sounds as if I always mean the low-rent stuff, and I don't get the heat on, because, for example, chorizo sausage, and you get salami or sausage, and I want sausage here, is the most superb example of a shortcut ingredient. What I get from a sausage that I keep in the fridge, frankly, is heat, because it's infused with chilli and paprika. I get a sort of bacony flavour, and I also get the cooking medium because the paprika-tinted oil that the sausage gives off as I cook it will in turn become the oil that I cook the scallops in. So my life made very, very much easier. In these go to a hot pan. And the joy here is just as with the chickpeas, I'm going to serve the scallops and chorizo in exactly the pan that I cook them in, less washing up. You know, it makes sense. Mm. That orange oil is so terrific. And the chorizo crisps up a little. I mean, the good thing about this is that actually chorizo is cured. So it's cooked already. All I need to do is warm it through. And the crispness you get once it has been warmed through is a fabulous partner to that sweet, tender softness of the scallop. Believe it or not, the chorizo is ready. These make a pretty fabulous little nibble, just as they are, if you wanted to have them in a different way. So 
into the orange oil, 600 grams of scallops. Scallops don't need much cooking, a minute or so, and they're tender and cooked within. Look at these juicy morsels. And all that tender white flesh is absorbing the paprika and garlic of the chorizo. Tumbling these back in. Mm. Give a little squirt of lemon. Barely half a lemon, really. And I'm going to scissor in a little parsley. This reminds me of all those lovely little dishes you eat in tapas bars in Spain. Look at that. The final stir. And this too, which is perfect when it's warm but not piping, needs its lid on and it will sit happily. And I have to say, it'll take longer for me to do my hair and put my lipstick on than it did for me to cook this. A rocket I just bung in and it wilts down with the chickpeas. Well, it gives it a wonderful flavour, it's delicious. It says me doing vegetables and salad. Absolutely. How quickly can you make this mousse? Five minutes? I just can't imagine how you managed to do all this after work because it's quite amazing what you put together in mm. just, what was it, half an hour? Well, I find greed can be a great motivator. <laughs> <laughs> do you? I do, actually. <laughs> 